Members of the Kennedy family endorsing President Biden today in Philadelphia, including some brothers and sisters of RFK Jr., who is also running for president. He's running as an independent that has left some members of his family not happy, and they made that pretty clear today. Watch. We want to make crystal clear our feeling that the best way forward for America is to reelect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to four more years. So her brother, RFK Jr., responded this way, quote, we are divided in our opinions, but united in our love for each other. I hold this as a possibility for America, too. Can we disagree without hating our opponents? So with that, um, that is the Democrat and independent side of the equation. We bring in Republican National Committee Chairman Michael Watley. Um, Chairman Watley, good to have you with us today. Thank you very much for it's joining good to be us. Good on so, with you, Martha. What do you think the impact is of this, of this big endorsement by the, you know, one of the, the most famous Democrat family in the country of Joe Biden while RFK Jr. is running as an independent? What's the impact? Look, the fact that the Democrats right now are trying to shore up the Democratic base for Joe Biden shows you that he's playing defense. He's playing defense all across the country. President Trump is playing offense. And so, you know, we feel like we're in a really good shape. We've got a far stronger uh, base within the Republican Party right now, much more unity than the Democrats have, because the Republicans remember four years under Donald Trump, while the Democrats are having to live these four years mm -hmm. under Joe Biden and dealing with immigration, dealing with inflation, and dealing with a place in the world that's not nearly as safe as it was under President Trump. Um you know, you take a look at Pennsylvania, though, obviously a really important state. Let's put up on the screen uh, how close the race has been in Pennsylvania over the past two presidential elections. Um, back in 2016, which is on the right-hand side of your screen, um, it was 44,000 vote differential over Hillary Clinton. And basically, um, you looked at Pittsburgh, Scranton, and Philadelphia, and that's where um, she ran up the vote, but not enough. And then look at what Biden did in really those same areas, the big three cities of Pennsylvania. And he was able to close the gap and surpass uh, President Trump in 2020 there. You, there's, it's no mystery why they were in Philadelphia today making that announcement. So what is the plan for the RNC there? Well, the plan in Pennsylvania is pretty simple. You know, we were up there last Saturday with uh, President Trump doing a couple different events, including a rally in the middle part of the state. Uh, 40,000 people came out on a freezing night uh, to see the president on a, on a Saturday. Uh, look, the, the excitement for him is very, very real. Pennsylvania is an absolutely critical state for us. It's one of those, you know, top five to seven states that we're going to be around the country. Uh, you, you won it once. You, you lost it once. We're going to have to be able to win it back. And the way that we're going to win it back is by talking to the voters about the issues that they care about. And they really care about immigration. They care about inflation. They care about gasoline prices. They care about housing prices and food prices. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, that Joe Biden's economy has put a, a cost on every Pennsylvania family, on every American family, that their wages are not keeping up with, and it is harder for them to make ends meet every single month. That's going to be a critical issue yeah. as we get into this election cycle. Well, I mean, obviously, President Trump is busy. Um, President Biden has made a joke about it, you know, saying, well, I, I guess he's a little tied up today while President uh, Biden is out on the campaign trail. And so one of the things that could be very fundamental here would be a presidential debate in terms of these areas where the, the, the battle is so very close. In the Atlantic, arguing this week, President Biden's spokesperson should answer the debate question like this. The Constitution is not debatable. The president does not participate in forums with a person who is under criminal indictment for his attempt to overthrow the Constitution. So what do you say about the debate question? Look, I think that the American voters want to see the contrast between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. The American voters, when they are informed voters, are going to vote Republican, and we've got a great opportunity to put these two candidates up next to each other. Donald Trump has made it very clear. He will debate Joe Biden anywhere, anytime, on any platform, and it would be an absolute shock if Joe Biden were to say that he's not going to debate. What do you think he'll do? You've been around politics a long time. Do you think that President Biden will eventually get up on that stage and debate? You know, I, I don't know how you can avoid it, frankly. Yeah. I think that when you go back to even the Nixon-Kennedy debates, you think about Ronald Reagan 
uh, in his debate against Walter Mondale. You know, there, there is a long history of debates that the American people expect. And if Joe Biden is not capable of getting on stage with President Trump and, and, and trying to defend his record, I think that sends a signal to mm -hmm. every voter across the country. Well, there was a debate last time, and uh, Biden won the election. So it's hard to figure out why he would be shying away at this point. Um, he should probably get up there and do it again. We certainly all hope he will. Michael Watley, chairman of the RNC, thank you. Great to see thank you. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.